What's up guys? All right, so I'm gonna start off this first video with some casting. Now, I know there's a lot of YouTube videos out there on casting, uh, but I just wanted to show the way I do it. It's, I just wanted to give it my take. So to get it started, um, you're gonna need a good source of lead. There's many different types of lead sources, uh, from wheel weights to dentist offices even, and and the way that I do it is I use wheel weights. And I have a good source of wheel weights that I get for just dirt cheap. So my, my yield isn't that good between lead and zinc, but it's not that big of an issue just because of how cheap I get these wheel weights. So the reason I go through this whole process is because zinc and lead have a real close melting temperature. Lead melts at 621 degrees and zinc melts at 787 degrees. And when I throw this onto the burner, it's going to be real close. Um, and I, even though I do have a lead thermometer, it's hard to uh, monitor it and with as much zinc that I'm going to be getting uh, I, I just don't want to take the chance so I'm doing as much sorting as I can and um, kind of make it worth my while to uh, just have lead 2,000 years later alright guys so we're finished sorting it took about four hours to do those four bins. Uh, we got about one quarter of a bin of lead, and the rest was the zinc and uh, other junk that we don't need from the auto parts store. So, uh, let's get this weighed out. All right, here we go, time for the final weigh-in. Look at that, 40 pounds of lead, not too bad. So there's a lot of things that you can do in those hours of work that you put in sorting your lead from your zinc. You can listen to audiobooks, which I usually do. You can listen to music, um, and you can even watch videos. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this. You're just sorting uh, one different type of wheel weight from the other. All right, so before we get to melting some lead, I wanted to go over some of the different types of wheel weights that you'll find. So the experienced casters might be able to quickly identify which ones are the lead and which ones are not. And for you new guys, it might not be so easy. So I just wanted to go over this real quick and start off. This side, this side right here and over, that's going to be our lead. And this side over here is going to be our zinc and our steel and our iron. And we're not going to want any of the zinc because the zinc has a really close melting temperature to our lead. So we, re we really want to filter that out. Starting over here, these two right here are going to be our clips. Those occasionally fall off in my bins that I get and they're real quick and easy to get rid of. And on this side, you'll see, see these clips here. And once the lead starts to melt, these clips will float to the top. And we won't have to worry about those till later because we'll just sift those off the top. So, these guys look a lot like these guys and could be hard to tell the difference right off the bat. And these guys are tricky as well, uh, just, they, because they have, just because they have this coating on them and it almost makes it look like this guy right here. So this lead wheel weight is going to be almost your pure lead and usually I'll filter that out and uh, save that for other types of um, ingots that, I, that we make. 
And we have these ones here, which we want to look out for because they look a lot like this. Some common markings that you'll see that you want to filter out is FE and ZN. If you ever see FE and ZN, just toss it. You don't need it. And another tricky one is uh, with these ones is that it has the MC marking on it. And you'll see over here on your lead that this one has the MC marking on it. So right now I'll go over some other ways to identify it other than visually. I've got four wheel weights here. Um, two are zinc and two are lead. So another way we can identify these is by sound. And I've got them upside down right now and I'll try to show you the best I can uh, the sound difference that they make. So this one has a very, it's a thud sound. It's just dull and a thud. This is going to be lead. Oh, I can already tell this one's lead. Very dull, dull thud. Now these two are going to be the zinc. Very different tone. It's almost a high pitched clank. That one as well, very high pitch. Lead, zinc. Lead, zinc. So that's another way you can tell the difference between lead and zinc. Now what I think is the fastest way to determine if you have lead or something else is with some snips. So basically, all you have to do is take your snips and squeeze real hard and then barely anything is done to this zinc wheel weight. There's barely anything there. Now if you do the same thing with the lead, Check that out. Massive dent. You could probably cut this thing in half if you wanted to. So that's the way I do it. I'll sit there with my bin and these snips and I'll sit there with the wheel weight and I'll do a quick check and if it leaves a massive dent, it's my lead. If I try it with something else, barely any mark. That's bad. One more example. Massive dent. So that's what I think is the fastest way to determine if you have lead or another type of wheel weight. Oh man, that was boring. Let's get to the fun stuff. Alright, so let's let the fun begin. Right now I've got my cast iron pot and I've got some old uh, bullets that aren't working out for me. Uh, my, the black ones I messed up on powder coating and some other random ones that just didn't make the cut. So uh, we're going to add in our lead and get this thing melted. Alright, I got my burner on. We're getting nice and hot. The powder coat uh, from the bullets is starting to burn off. I'll start adding my lead here and we'll get this thing cooking. So as I'm filling up my pot, I go quite a bit over the top with the lead. It's kind of hard to tell how high it is. It's 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 up there, but uh, when, it's, when all is said and done, it's going to only fill up about halfway. And oh man, this is satisfying to watch. And then here it here all the clips float to the top and sort those out. Now that we've got our clips filtered out, we just have this dirt and junk and remnants from the powder coating on the original bullets. So we're going to want to sort this out. And I've got this kitchen spoon ladle thing that uh, has these holes in it so I can grab the dirt and keep the lead. And we'll keep doing this till we have a nice mirror finish on the top. All the impurities like the dirt and the powder coat 
Um, that's called your dross. I'm gonna take all this dross out, or as much as I can at least. And a good way to do that is by fluxing it. And there's a lot of different ways to flux your lead, uh, but I just use some candle wax. Break them in half and toss them in. And this is where you're gonna get a lot of smoke, and it might possibly uh, flame up, but that's okay, just go with it. Uh, I'm gonna cut real quick so I can get my fan back on. Now that I've got the wax in there, I'm just gonna take my slotted spoon and kind of grind the bottoms and the edges of the inside of the pot and get all the impurities that I can out. As much dross as will come up, as much dross that comes up, the better. Um, and it's not gonna be perfect. Um, also, like I told you earlier, it could flame up, but that's okay. Um, just let the flame go out by itself. Don't need to freak out. Um, as long as you're outside, you'll be good to go. Now once it stops smoking is when I'll usually call it good and uh, I'm scraping the bottom of the pot, the sides, trying to get all the dross up. I'll use the side of the pot as a way to sift out all the little stuff that's left. So right now we're looking pretty good. Probably be able to get this poured in mold here in a minute. As far as my molds go, I use the Lee mold. It has two one pound cavities and two half pound cavities that I will be able to pour right in. I just use this camping cup that I squeezed in my vise to get a little pour spout and uh, we'll get this going here. Okay, now that my cup is nice and warmed up, I'm gonna start scooping it in and pouring it in my mold. Even though I haven't really talked about safety much this video, I just wanted to make it clear that it's really important to wear pants and a long sleeve shirt and eye protection um, because lead, it can pop if it comes into contact with water. And I've heard cases of people um, over pouring onto their cement and it popping up after it touches the cement. So just wanted to make sure that it's clear that we follow all, safe, all safety procedures. And you'll know it's ready to go when the lead kind of hazes over and gets this dull color. The middle's not quite yet ready. There we go, that should about be about done. Then, once it's ready to go, I'll just turn it over and tap it on the ground. Ready, set, time lapse. As your lead is sitting in your ingots, it'll probably take just a couple minutes to uh, harden completely. And right here, what I did is I grabbed a rag and I soaked it in water. And then I put my Lee mold on top of this wet rag and it makes it so much faster. The only thing is, like I said earlier, is there's water involved, so you have to be very careful not to get any of this lead splashed onto the water because it it is reactive. All right, guys, there it is. About 35 pounds of some nice clean lead. Um, doesn't all look so great. Uh, we got a little bit of overpour on things, ones like these, and. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but this is the one where I had to double pour because I ran out in my in my little cup. But it's just gonna get melted down again and made even smaller. Thanks for watching.
All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me while we casted some lead today. I uh, hope you all will learn something, and please feel free to subscribe. It helps me out a lot, and see you on the next video. Now that my cup is nice and heated up, I'm gonna grab a scoop and I'm gonna pour it into my mold. No, I'm not. That's freaking hot. Okay. Yeah. Do you want the real answer or the answer that's gonna make you happy? The one that's gonna make me happy. Oh, about five minutes, honey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>